Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're checking out whether or not a Raspberry Pi 02W can be used as a daily desktop PC. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, the Pi Zero 02 is a little $15 computer. It's five times more powerful than the previous Pi Zero, and it's got about the same power as a Raspberry Pi 3, just a little bit slower. A lot of people have been asking me, can you use this as a desktop computer? My answer to that initially is no, but we might as well test it out. At a high level here, I think these are the specs that you might be interested in if you're looking at the Zero 02 as a daily desktop computer. We have a 1 gigahertz quad core CPU, 512 megabytes of DDR2 RAM. It does have Wi Fi, it does have Bluetooth, it uses micro SD for its storage, and it also has mini HDMI to connect to your monitor. It's powered by a micro USB port. Although the Pi 2 is only 15 bucks, the accessories you'll need to pick up in order to make this fully functional as a desktop PC will set you back more than the device itself. I recommend picking up a heatsink. I recommend picking up a decent micro SD card. The bigger, the better for using it as a desktop PC. And finally, you will need a micro USB hub. This little hub that I'm using has four USB ports. It will allow me to plug in things like my mouse and keyboard. If you are using a micro USB hub, just make sure it's OTG capable instead of just a charging hub. I'll leave a link to everything I'm using in the description below. For this video, I will be using Raspberry Pi OS as the main operating system since it is fully supported, fully optimized, and fairly lightweight. Installation of this is really easy. Just pick up the Raspberry Pi imager from the Raspberry Pi website. Next up, make sure your micro SD card is plugged into your computer. If you don't have an adapter or can't plug it into your computer, I've got you covered with a link in the description below. Then boot up Raspberry Pi imager. From here, I'm gonna click choose OS. And from this menu, I have a bunch of different options. Under other general purpose OS, I can see things like Ubuntu, Manjaro, and Risk. If I scroll down a little bit here, I can see under Emulation and Game OS, RetroPie and Recalbox, two amazing operating systems. But we are installing Raspberry Pi OS here. I have three different options, uh, the standard version of Raspberry Pi OS, but under here I have Raspberry Pi OS Lite. That doesn't have a desktop environment, so I don't want it. Or Raspberry Pi OS Full. This has the desktop environment along with all recommended applications. Since we're using this as a desktop PC, this is the version I want. From here, I'm going to click Choose Storage, select my micro SD card, and then click Write. When this finishes, I can then put it in the Raspberry Pi and boot up the Pi. So after finishing up the initial setup process, I rebooted the Raspberry Pi and I've been sitting on the desktop now for actually quite some time, a couple of hours. I wanted to figure out what kind of stress just running the operating system puts on this little computer. So far, so good. In the top right hand corner, I added a couple widgets. We have the temperature, which is running at 45 degrees Celsius. Well, 44 now, well, back to 45. That's lower than I thought it was going to be. And the room here is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, just for reference. And also the CPU usage is sitting at between zero and 1%, which is a lot lower than I thought it was going to be. If we take a look at the RAM here, just running the OS alone, we're using 151 megabytes of 427 available megabytes. So just over one third of the RAM is being used by the operating system, which I think might pose a problem later on. And if I move around the task manager here, I can increase the CPU usage, which also isn't, it's not a good sign, but we'll see what happens when I open up some applications here. This is bumping up to about six to 10%, which is mildly concerning. Uh, but I will minimize this. We'll see how things go once I open some things up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is some mild internet browsing. So I cut part of this out, but the browser took about 45 seconds to boot up, which is not the greatest. I mean, if you're not in a rush here, it's absolutely fine. But if you are in a rush, well, you're gonna be a little bit frustrated with the response. And now I'm trying to click to uh, change this website and it's taken forever here. I'm gonna type in Google and see how that works and I've typed it in on the keyboard and it's still not responsive. We'll see how long this takes. I'm not gonna cut this out. I'm just gonna wait here and, and see how long it takes for it to actually register what I typed in. And so far, not so good. It's really taking its time. Is my keyboard even working? It is. Wow, that took uh, that took quite a bit of time. Okay, so I've hit backspace a couple of times here, and we're still stuck in the uh, the browser. Um, 
this is this is not promising. Okay, I had high hopes initially, but uh, those hopes have uh, they've gone downhill pretty quick. And just to prove to you that everything is up to date, and I'm not pulling your leg here. Here is the terminal results when I try to do an update and an upgrade. For this next test, I'm gonna try to open up a Word document here. Again, I don't have the highest hopes, but let's see what happens. It's probably gonna take quite a bit. I might edit this out and just uh, cut to when the document opens up. All right, so that took a bit of time. The CPU usage here is sitting very low, which is a good thing, but my RAM usage is 50% used basically with just one thing open, which is not very good. I'm just gonna try typing something in here to see if there's a big delay like there was in the web browser. So, hello, my name is Mr. Sujano. Uh, it's not actually too bad at all, and I was typing fairly slow. I've got a cable that's kind of draped across the keyboard here. Um, I'm just gonna hit some random keys and see if how responsive it is. That's doing okay. So I guess if you're typing here and not in a rush, this passes the test. So with this little bit of testing here, I think it's pretty safe to say that no, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W straight out of the box is not a good desktop PC, but let's overclock it. Fortunately here, overclocking this little Pi is very simple and straightforward, and we do have that tiny heatsink on it. Fingers crossed it holds up, we'll remain hopeful here. Uh, so the first thing I did is opened up the terminal. I'm gonna type in sudo or sudo uh, nano slash boot slash config dot txt. And this is the configuration file that we can edit. From here, I'm just gonna scroll down to the very bottom. I have two lines of code to add. The first one here is arm underscore freak equals 1300. And that's changing the frequency of the CPU to 1300 megahertz or 1.3 gigahertz. That's overclocking it. Uh, the second thing I'm adding here is over underscore voltage equals four. So we're overvolting this as well to supply additional power to that CPU. These settings here, I don't recommend going over them, overclocking it more than this. If you do, do it at your own risk. Even doing this, overclocking it as it is, is at your own risk. I'm willing to take this risk on a $15 CPU, so we'll see how things go. To save these changes, hit Control and X and then press Y and enter. Now I'm gonna reboot the Raspberry Pi for the settings to take effect and hope for the best. So I don't have my hopes up too much here. I am hoping for the best, but at the same time, I'm expecting to be let down based on these first tests. Uh, let's see how much overclocking really helps this out. All right, so I've rebooted the Pi. We're successfully overclocked here. I've had it sitting for a bit and we're sitting at 47 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit warmer than when it wasn't overclocked. It's actually not that much warmer and I'm very surprised about this. CPU usage is also sitting at around zero to 1%. So let's check out the browser here. We'll click this first and fingers crossed this loads up a little bit faster, but it doesn't look like it. This is, uh, well, this was kind of unexpected. I was hoping it was gonna load up a little bit faster than this. I'll hit uh, Google here, so google.ca and uh, well, it was faster than the last time, so that's good. Uh, still not overly hopeful. I'm gonna try opening up a new tab here. Okay, so it's considerably faster than it was. That is good. Uh, still a little bit slow, but I wouldn't say this is completely unusable. I'll go right to my YouTube page here and see how that loads up. Fingers crossed. And also seems to be going a lot faster. So overclocking really did help this out. It's still slow, but I mean, it's a lot faster than it was. For the next test here, I'm going to make the browser full screen. I know this doesn't really sound like a stressful test, but on this little pie, it seems like it might be. And I don't exactly know what's going on here with this screen. I'm just gonna try increasing this to full screen here. And it is struggling quite a bit. So I think I can probably safely end this test right now. I don't think there's much point at continuing this uh, moving forward here. In terms of usability, I mean, I'm scrolling on my mouse wheel right now and I'm not getting any response whatsoever. At the end of the day here, I had fun testing this out. The results, they were a little bit disappointing, but not at all unexpected. No, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W should not be used as a substitute for a daily desktop PC. Well, unless your needs are extremely limited or you have a lot of patience. Other than that, that doesn't mean that this CPU is useless. It's very useful. If you're using Linux without a desktop environment, then this comes in handy. It works very well. 
If you're using this as a retro gaming device, maybe for playing SNES or even PlayStation games, this might also come in handy, and I'll have you covered with a video on this channel. Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W in the comments below. What are you using one of these for? If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.